Hello, this is Gavin Patterson from Studio 1790 and today I'm going to do a beginner's tutorial on EQ. So, from now on I'm going to do two different types of tutorials. There's going to be beginner tutorials, that's for absolute beginners who have never come into contact with any other stuff before. And I'm also going to do intermediate slash expert videos, so people who have a little bit of knowledge of this stuff but maybe they want a little bit more into it, more detail. So today it's going to be an absolute beginner tutorial on EQ and what EQ is, why you should care about it, things like that. So first of all, EQ, what does EQ mean? It actually means equalization or equalizer. Um, and what it, what it means is it's a method or a way of adjusting the volume of different frequencies in an audio recording or sample. So we'll just go straight into Cubase and I'll show you what it looks like. So here we are, we have a session set up. Uh, it's an acoustic guitar recording, which I'll just have playing on loop. And I have here a simple EQ. This is the simplest one I could find uh, in my collection, one that's the, the sort of easiest to look at. Um, the reason I say that is because it has this graph, if you can see here, um, which shows you what frequencies are prominent or happening on the screen, like a visual representation, so you can actually see what's happening. So this all looks rather complicated. If you've never seen anything like this before, it can probably seem a little bit daunting. So I'm going to break it down. I'm not going to go into the details of each individual knob and button on this plugin. I'm just going to go through the fundamentals of EQ. Um, so I can ex explain all the ins and outs of um, a particular EQ plugin at a later date on a more advanced video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a little section of music uh, of this gu guitar recording. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what it sounds like when you sweep the EQ curve up and down the frequency spectrum and listen to what it sounds like. And if you're listening on like an iPhone or a phone or an iPad and you're just using the speakers on the, the iPhone or the iPad, don't. I recommend that you get yourself a pair of headphones or if you have studio monitors to listen on that because you won't hear precisely what I'm talking about if you're listening on just simple speakers like an iPhone. So please um, grab yourself a set of headphones. So I'm going to hit play and I'm going to sweep up the frequency spectrum and see if you can hear what happens. Cool. So you, you've probably heard something like that done before in different styles of music. This, that, that actual, that filter sweep is actually quite common in like dance music and stuff like that. But for, for the purposes of this, I'm just trying to show you what an EQ does. So it raises, or in some cases, uh, takes away the volume of a particular frequency that you select. So what is a frequency? A frequency is... It's vibrations per second. So what is sound? Sound is a vibration. And the the less vibrations there are, the lower frequency. The more vibrations, the higher frequency. So high-pitched sounds have higher frequencies and low-pitched sounds have lower frequencies. So typical instruments for each frequency range. Lower frequency ranges, that's bass. You know, kick drum, bass guitar. I think they, they occupy a lot of low-frequency information although they do have high frequency information as well, but we'll come to that. Uh, the reason why I chose acoustic guitar for this is because acoustic guitar has a good balance of all frequencies. So it's easy to show uh, in this example. So mid-range frequ mid, mid frequencies are 
in the sort of realm of like cello or spoken word, like human voice. So that's that's around the middle. And upper end, you're talking birds, birds song or uh, tambourine, um, the sparkly sound you get on an acoustic guitar, a whistle or um, flute, something like that. So, but each each instrument has the entire frequency spectrum. So it's just which ones are more prominent. So in this case, we have an acoustic guitar and I can sweep up and down the frequency spectrum. All of the frequencies that I, you could hear that sweep going up and down as I hit play, all of that information is already in the acoustic guitar. All I'm doing is I'm emphasizing certain parts of it. So if I sweep up and down, all I'm doing is raising the volume of frequencies that are already in the recording. I'm not adding anything new to the signal. All I'm doing is I'm increasing the volume of what is already there. So that's that's what an EQ does. And you can also do the opposite. You can subtract instead of add. So that would be, that, that's known as attenuation. That's when you bring the level down. And the same thing happens. I'll show you what that sounds like. So that's what that sounds like. It's it's a little easier to tell when it's uh, increasing the volume rather than taking away. Um, well, it's less obvious anyway. So why why would you need something like this? So sometimes when you record a musical instrument or whatever it happens to be, you might find certain frequencies louder than others and you might not necessarily want that. So you use the EQ to maybe take away certain frequencies that might appear jarring or they might jump at you like a little too loud or some frequencies that you want to hear more of that are too quiet so you can use an EQ to boost those frequencies to get a more natural sounding audio source whatever it happens to be a guitar or a vocal or whatever and you can use different types of EQs for different jobs um, and we'll get onto that on another video but I thought I would make this quick tutorial just explaining the sort of the whys behind EQ like why do we need this what does it do fundamentally so I hope that was helpful so this this EQ is um it's a very visual one it's a it's a, it's a graphic EQ meaning that you can actually see on a graph what is happening a lot of the EQs I use and are quite popular they don't have any graph, so you have to literally just use your ears. It's, it can be quite tempting to mix with your eyes sometimes, but I recommend not doing that. But it's good to see where the frequencies are, because if you're looking for a problem frequency, it's good to just look at the graph and see where all the peaks and the troughs are on the graph, so you can immediately go, okay, I, I can see what I'm working with. But I think we'll leave it there, and we'll go on to another video, and we'll further explain you know, what types of EQs to use, uh, where and why, and all the different buttons on the EQ machines, what, what, what does it all mean? So we'll go on to that in the next video. So if you enjoyed this episode, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel and click the notification bell if you want to receive updates on future videos. Thanks for watching.